Okay, so get this. We always hear that knowledge is power, right? But today we're diving into a different kind of power, mechanical power, and um, how it's really like changing the way doctors are thinking about ventilators. Yeah, it's really interesting. We're talking about the energy that's delivered to the lungs by a ventilator. And it's not just about getting the air in there. It's about understanding the forces that are involved and how those forces can impact someone's recovery. Yeah, you got that right. So we've got a sack of research on this, including a really cool study that came out of the Journal of Mechanical Ventilation. And they're proposing a much simpler way to actually calculate this power, which is a big deal. It is a big deal. So if you're at all interested in, uh, you know, the latest in medical technology or, you know, maybe you know somebody or have a personal connection to somebody who's needed a ventilator, this is the deep dive for you. Absolutely. Understanding how this technology works and how to use it safely is incredibly important for so many people. All right. So let's break this down. I guess the first question is, what exactly is mechanical power when we're talking about ventilators? It's basically a measure of the energy that the ventilator delivers to the lungs every minute. So think of it like inflating a balloon, the force you use to like blow air in. That's kind of like mechanical power, but it's more than just that one thing. Okay, so that's where it gets interesting to me. This study is saying that mechanical power actually takes all the important factors into account, all the things that can contribute to lung injury from a ventilator. Precisely. So we're talking about things like the pressure that's needed to inflate the lungs, the volume of air delivered with each breath, and even the pressure that keeps the lungs from collapsing. Mechanical power kind of pulls all these pieces together. And the big question is, why are we so focused on mechanical power in the first place? Well, because studies are showing that too much of it can be risky for patients on ventilators, right? You got it. High mechanical power can lead to something called ventilator-induced lung injury, or VIL for short, and too much force, and those really delicate lung tissues can get damaged. Okay, VIL, bad news. But up until now, measuring this mechanical power was a very complicated process, wasn't it? I was reading that it involved analyzing every single breath in detail, something that's just not feasible in a busy hospital setting. Right. And that's where this new research is so exciting because they've come up with a simplified way to calculate mechanical power, which they're calling the MM equation. And it uses measurements that are readily available, the average pressure in the airways and the total volume of air that's breathed per minute. It's a real game changer in terms of practicality. So what does this mean for doctors and patients in the real world? Potentially a lot. I mean, this simpler equation could allow clinicians to monitor mechanical power much more routinely. Imagine being able to quickly assess the risk of VIL right there at the bedside without needing any fancy equipment. That sounds like it could lead to doctors being able to spot lung injury earlier and maybe even adjusting those ventilator settings before things get worse. Exactly. And this could be especially crucial in places where they might not have access to complex monitoring systems. You know, th this equation could really be a lifesaver. So is giving doctors a powerful new tool to help them make better decisions about how to use these ventilators? That's a great way to put it. It's so important because... While ventilators can be life-saving for patients who are struggling to breathe, we need to use them as safely and effectively as possible. Now, before we get too carried away, it's important to remember that this research is still pretty new. Right. They use a simulator to test this equation. So the next step is to see if it holds up in real patients with all their you know, complexities. Which is really exciting because it opens up a whole new world of research. And who knows what we'll learn about improving care for these patients. What's also really intriguing is the idea of building this equation directly into the ventilators themselves. Oh, wow. Imagine a world where mechanical power is automatically calculated and displayed right alongside all the other vital signs. I mean, that would be huge. It would be like having a built-in safety net, making sure that those on ventilators are getting the most personalized care possible. But let's rewind for just a second this MLM equation. While simpler still involves you know, medical terms that some people might not be familiar with. Could you break down mean airway pressure and minute ventilation for us? Of course. So think of mean airway pressure, like the average pressure in your lungs while you're breathing. It kind of reflects the effort it takes to get air in and out. And then minute ventilation, that's just the total volume of air that you breathe in one minute. So it's like measuring the overall amount of air you're taking in. So this equation basically takes those two easily measured things, combines them, and gives us a snapshot of mechanical power. That's the heart of it. It's a really clever way to take something complex like mechanical power and make it much easier to understand and actually use, you know, in a hospital setting. Now, I was reading that the research team 
even came up with different versions of this equation depending on what type of ventilator is being used. That's right. So they have separate equations for what's called pressure-controlled ventilation and volume-controlled ventilation. It's like having different tools for different jobs, making sure you get the most accurate measure of mechanical power depending on how the ventilator is working. And they even created a visual guide to make it super user-friendly. They did. Doctors can actually use this guide to quickly estimate mechanical power just by glancing at the MAMM value. It's like a cheat sheet to make this knowledge super accessible, even if they don't have you know, access to advanced monitoring systems. That's fantastic. It makes this information useful for doctors and all kinds of hospitals and clinics. Speaking of making this knowledge practical, let's talk about why this research matters so much. What are the real world implications of being able to easily calculate mechanical power? Well, first and foremost, it has the potential to completely change how we think about managing ventilators. By having this readily available measure of mechanical power, doctors can make much more informed decisions about how to set up the ventilator for each patient. So it's not just about waiting for a lung injury to happen, it's about being proactive and preventing it. Exactly. It's all about fine-tuning those ventilator settings to provide the right amount of support while minimizing the risk of causing harm. And this is especially crucial for patients with something called ARDS, where the lungs are already very sensitive and vulnerable to injury. And in critical care units, where every second counts that kind of early detection, could really be game-changing. Absolutely. When it comes to lung injury, early detection and intervention are key. By using this simple equation, doctors can keep a closer eye on mechanical power and make adjustments as needed. It's like having an early warning system to help protect the lungs. And that could ultimately mean fewer complications, shorter stays in the ICU, and better outcomes overall. Precisely. It's about giving healthcare providers the knowledge and the tools they need to deliver the highest quality care. This research also really emphasizes the importance of ongoing innovation in medical technology. Absolutely. We're constantly learning more about how the body works and how to manage complex medical conditions. Like in this case, we're getting a much more nuanced understanding of how mechanical ventilation impacts the lungs and how to use it more safely and effectively. And this study is a perfect example of how collaboration drives scientific oh. discovery. You've got researchers from multiple institutions all coming together to push the boundaries of what we know. And that's what makes science so exciting. It's a collective effort driven by this shared goal of improving human health. Now, while this research is incredibly promising, it's important to be realistic about its limitations, right? Of course, as we mentioned before, they used a simulator to test this new equation. So the next step is to confirm these findings in real patients and see if the equation works as well in the complex environment of a hospital. That's going to be fascinating to follow. We need to see how this equation performs in different patients with varying degrees of lung injury, yeah. you know, to be absolutely sure about its accuracy and reliability. Exactly. And that's where things get even more interesting. We need to see if this equation works as well in real world situations. And that's what's so exciting about research like this. It opens up like a whole new world of possibilities for improving patient care. Speaking of which, this new equation could be really helpful for researchers who are studying villi. I see what you mean. Yeah, it's like giving them a new tool to help them understand this really complex condition. Exactly. With this like simpler way to measure mechanical power, they can design better studies to really investigate what causes villi and explore new treatments. This could lead to even more targeted therapies that specifically address the damage caused by too much mechanical power. Imagine that. Medications designed to protect the lungs from ventilator-induced injury. Yeah, it's an incredible thought, and it just goes to show that scientific progress happens, you know, step by step, building on past discoveries and constantly refining our understanding. And this research really highlights those amazing things that can happen when people from different fields come together. You've got clinicians, engineers, researchers, all working side by side to develop new tools and techniques. Absolutely, and it makes you wonder if we can now easily calculate and track mechanical power, should ventilators be redesigned to automatically adjust their settings based on this information? Ooh, that's a fascinating idea. It would be like having a smart ventilator that could respond in real time to what's happening in the patient's lungs. Imagine a ventilator that continuously monitors mechanical power and makes tiny adjustments to, you know, the amount of air delivered, the breathing rate, or the pressure to keep the lungs open, all automatically to keep mechanical power within a safe range for that specific patient. It would be like having an autopilot for ventilation, helping to prevent lung injury and making sure the patient is getting the right support at all times. 
Exactly. Of course, to make that happen, we need some incredibly sophisticated algorithms and safety protocols to make sure it works in all kinds of situations. And it would take a ton of testing to make sure it's safe and effective in real patients. No doubt. But the potential benefits are huge. Think about a future where ventilators aren't just these machines that are keeping people alive, but intelligent devices that actually help to prevent lung injury. It's a vision worth working towards, using technology to improve care and give doctors the best tools possible. Now, you mentioned mean airway pressure earlier, and the research kind of dives into that a little bit. And I yeah. think it's an important concept for people to understand, even if it is a bit technical. You're right. It is a bit technical, but it's really key to understanding how this whole thing works. So mean airway pressure, or PAW, as it's often called, is essentially the average pressure in your airways during the entire breathing cycle. So it's like taking the average of all the pressures involved in getting air in and out. Precisely. And it turns out that this average pressure actually reflects the pressure inside the tiny air sacs in your lungs, the alveoli, where the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide happens. So by measuring the mean airway pressure, we can get a sense of what's happening deep down in the lungs where it matters most. Exactly. And the researchers found that this mean airway pressure, just like the more commonly used plateau pressure, can actually predict how well a patient's doing on the ventilator. That's really interesting. It suggests that mean airway pressure is a valuable indicator of how much stress the lungs are experiencing during ventilation. Exactly. And that's why it's such an important part of this MEL-MM equation. It gives us a readily available and reliable way to kind of measure those pressures during ventilation. And by combining it with the minute ventilation, which is simply the total volume of air that's breathed per minute, mm. you get the simple yet powerful equation for estimating mechanical power. It's such an elegant solution. The researchers found a way to use existing data in a totally new way to gain a deeper understanding of how ventilation works. It really speaks to the power of innovation in medicine and how we're constantly finding new ways to understand and manage these complex conditions. Now, I know you're a fan of visuals, and I'm curious about the pressure volume loop, or PV loop. The research mentions using this to validate their new equation. Oh, I love a good PV loop. They're fascinating. It's basically a visual representation of the relationship between pressure and volume in the lungs during breathing. Each loop is like a fingerprint, telling a unique story about the mechanics of breathing for that patient. And the researchers used these PV loops to double check the accuracy of their new equation. They did. They compared the mechanical power calculated using their simplified MEL-M equation to the mechanical power that's calculated by analyzing these detailed PV loops. And that PV loop method is considered like the gold standard, but it's much more complex. And the results. A strong correlation. Even when using different types of ventilators, the MEL-M equation was able to accurately estimate mechanical power without having to do this complex PV loop analysis. That's amazing. It really simplifies things for doctors mm. and makes this important information readily available. For those of us who are visual learners, can you paint a picture of what a PV loop looks like and what it tells us? Absolutely. So imagine a graph. The vertical axis shows pressure and the horizontal axis shows volume. As the patient breathes in, the ventilator delivers air, the pressure rises, and the lungs expand. This creates a line on the graph that moves upward and to the right. So the loop starts at a low pressure and low volume, and then as the lungs fill with air, it kind of climbs up and to the right. Exactly. Then as the patient breaks out and air flows out of the lungs, the pressure and volume decrease. This creates a line on the graph that slopes downward and to the left, completing the loop. So the loop returns to its starting point, showing like a full breathing cycle. Right. And the shape and size of this loop can tell us a lot about how well the lungs are working. For example, a wide loop might indicate that the lungs are stiff and difficult to inflate, while a narrow loop might suggest that the lungs are more flexible. So it's like a window into the lungs, revealing the dynamics of pressure, volume, and airflow. Exactly. It's an incredibly valuable tool for understanding the mechanics of breathing and for making decisions about how to best manage the ventilator. Now, turning our attention to different patients, are there certain groups who might benefit more from this kind of mechanical power monitoring? That's a great question. While monitoring mechanical power can be helpful for anyone on a ventilator, some groups are especially vulnerable to lung injury and could really benefit from this technology. For instance, patients with ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, they have very sensitive lungs. ARDS is a serious condition that causes a lot of inflammation and fluid buildup in the lungs making them very stiff and hard to ventilate. That's right. And because of this, patients with ARDS are at a much higher risk of developing villi if the ventilator settings aren't managed very carefully. So in these cases, 
being able to easily monitor mechanical power could be incredibly valuable for fine-tuning those ventilator settings and protecting those fragile lungs. Exactly. It's all about minimizing the risk of further injury while still providing the necessary support. Another group that comes to mind is premature infants. Their lungs are still developing and are much more susceptible to damage from high pressures or volumes. Absolutely. Monitoring mechanical power could be crucial for ensuring that those tiny lungs are ventilated as gently and safely as possible. It's all about giving those little ones the best chance at healthy lung development. What about patients with COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease? Would they benefit from this as well? They could. So COPD is a long-term condition that makes it hard to breathe often causing air to get trapped in the lungs. This can lead to higher pressures inside the lungs and excessive mechanical power from the ventilator could make things worse. So in these cases, mechanical power monitoring could help doctors adjust the ventilator to minimize air trapping and keep pressures at a safe level. Precisely, it's all about individualizing the ventilation strategy to fit the specific needs of each patient and their unique lung condition. Which brings us back to this idea of personalized medicine using our knowledge and technology to provide the best possible care for each individual. Speaking of technology, what role could artificial intelligence or AI play in mechanical power monitoring and ventilator management? Oh, AI is an incredibly exciting frontier in this field. It has the potential to revolutionize how we approach respiratory care. AI algorithms can analyze enormous amounts of data and find patterns that humans might miss. So in the context of mechanical ventilation, AI could look at data from the ventilator itself, patient monitors, even electronic health records to get a complete picture. Exactly. By analyzing all that information, AI could potentially predict the risk of villi before it even happens, recommend the best ventilator settings for each patient, and even spot subtle changes in a patient's condition that might need attention. It's like having a team of experts constantly monitoring the patient and providing real-time insights and guidance to the healthcare team. That's a great way to put it. It would be like having a super smart assistant for doctors, helping them make the best possible decisions for their patients. Of course, we need to be incredibly careful with the development and use of AI. We need to make sure these systems are thoroughly tested and validated for safety and effectiveness. Absolutely. And we need to carefully consider the ethical implications of using AI in healthcare. Things like data privacy and potential bias in the algorithms need to be addressed very carefully. But the potential benefits are truly remarkable. AI could really help us understand those complexities of respiratory mechanics, personalized ventilator management, and ultimately improve outcomes for patients who need this life-saving technology. It's a powerful reminder of just how much technology is changing healthcare and how we need to be thoughtful and responsible as we integrate these advancements into patient care. Now, it's worth noting that not everyone in the medical community is fully on board with the idea of mechanical power being like the key driver behind villi. That's an important point. There are always different perspectives in science, and it's healthy to have those debates. Exactly. Some experts argue that focusing solely on mechanical power might be an oversimplification. They point out that other factors like how evenly ventilation is distributed in the lungs, the overall health of the lung tissue, and the patient's general health all play a role. It's like trying to understand a symphony by only listening to one instrument you miss the richness and complexity of the entire piece. That's a great analogy. Their concern is that if we put too much emphasis on mechanical power, we might overlook other important aspects of care. So it's about keeping a balanced perspective. While mechanical power is important, we need to look at the whole picture, including the individual patient, their medical history, and how they're responding to treatment. Exactly. It's about using all the information we have, along with our clinical experience and judgment, to make the best possible decisions for our patients. Now, this research also brings up some pretty weighty ethical questions, particularly about how this knowledge of mechanical power might be used when making decisions about life support. Yeah, it's a really complex issue now that we can easily calculate mechanical power and studies are suggesting a link between high levels and increased mortality. It raises a difficult question. Could this be used to determine when to stop life support? It's a very sensitive topic and one that requires careful consideration. On one hand, we want to use all the information available to make the best choices for our patients, especially when it comes to end of life care. But on the other hand, we have to be incredibly careful about using a single measurement, even one as potentially informative as mechanical power, to make such profound decisions. It's crucial to remember that every patient is an individual with their own unique circumstances, values, and goals. 
we can't reduce a human life to a number. You're absolutely right. These decisions about life support are incredibly complex and should always involve open and honest conversations between doctors, patients, and their families. It's about understanding the patient's wishes, discussing the potential benefits and risks of treatment, and considering the overall prognosis. And above all, it's about respecting the patient's autonomy and making sure that decisions align with their values and goals. This research really highlights the need for clear guidelines and protocols for how to use mechanical power when making these difficult decisions about end-of-life care. I completely agree. It's a conversation that needs to happen, not just within the medical community, but as a society, we need to think deeply about how we use technology in end-of-life care and make sure it's being used responsibly and ethically. It's a reminder that science isn't just about discovering new facts. It's about grappling with the ethical and societal implications of those discoveries. Speaking of different perspectives, there's been some debate about the role of PEEP, positive and expiratory pressure in these mechanical power calculations. Ah, yes, the PEEP debate. So as you know, PEEP is a standard setting on ventilators that helps keep the tiny air sacs in the lungs open at the end of each breath. It's like adding a little bit of extra air pressure to prevent those air sacs from collapsing. Exactly. It's often used in patients with ARDS and other conditions to improve oxygen levels and protect the lungs from further injury. However, some experts have argued that including PEEP in the mechanical power calculations might not be entirely accurate. Because it's a constant pressure that's always there, rather than those dynamic pressure changes that happen during active breathing. That's their argument. They suggest that including PEEP might overestimate the actual energy delivered to the lungs during breathing. Their thinking is that focusing on the dynamic changes in pressure and volume during each breath might give a more accurate picture of the forces involved in lung injury. So it's an ongoing debate. It highlights how our understanding of mechanical power and its relationship to lung injury is constantly evolving. Absolutely. It's a reminder that science is all about questioning our assumptions and constantly seeking a deeper understanding, even when it comes to concepts we thought we had figured out. Now, the research specifically mentions two main types of ventilation, volume-controlled ventilation, VCV, and pressure-controlled ventilation, VCV. Did they find that this new equation worked well for both types? They did. The study showed that the MM equation accurately estimated mechanical power in both VCV and PCV, which is great news for its practicality. However, they did point out that there are some subtle differences in how mechanical power is calculated and interpreted depending on the ventilation mode that's being used. Could you elaborate on that a bit? Of course. So in VCV, the ventilator is set to deliver a specific volume of air with each breath, and the pressure required to do that varies depending on how stiff or flexible the lungs are. So in VCV, the volume is fixed, but the pressure can change. What about PCV? In PCV, it's the pressure that is preset, and the volume of air delivered with each breath varies based on the lungs' characteristics. So in PCV, the pressure is fixed, but the volume can change. Interesting. Right. And these differences in how the ventilator is working can affect how we calculate and interpret mechanical power. So it's really important for doctors to understand the nuances of each ventilation mode and how that might influence the relationship between mechanical power and lung injury. Absolutely. And this research emphasizes that we need to pay close attention to how each patient responds to the ventilator, regardless of the mode that's being used. What might be an acceptable level of mechanical power for one person could be harmful for another. It's all about finding that sweet spot, the right amount of support without causing damage. Exactly. It's a balancing act. And this research gives us a valuable new tool to help us find that balance. And this knowledge could also influence the design of future ventilators. Absolutely. If we know that keeping mechanical power within a safe range is so crucial for preventing lung injury, it makes sense to design ventilators that can monitor and adjust this automatically. Imagine a ventilator that can not only measure mechanical power, but also adjust its settings in real time to keep it within a safe zone for each patient. It would be like having a smart ventilator that can adapt to the patient's needs and help prevent lung injury before it even happens. Of course, it would require some seriously advanced technology, and it would be crucial to make sure it's safe and reliable. Without a doubt. But the potential benefits are huge. It could be a game changer for patients who need ventilation. And while we often focus on the medical benefits of research like this, there are economic considerations as well. That's a good point. If using this new equation to monitor mechanical power helps prevent lung injury and reduce the amount of time that patients need to be on a ventilator, it could lead to substantial cost savings for healthcare systems. That makes sense. Villi is a serious complication that can lead to longer hospital stays, more intensive care, 
and sadly even death, preventing it would not only improve patient outcomes, but also reduce the burden on healthcare resources. Exactly. It's a win-win situation. Investing in preventative measures like this could pay off in the long run, both for patients and for healthcare systems. Now, this study also highlights the importance of education for healthcare professionals. Absolutely. The concept of mechanical power is relatively new, and many doctors and nurses might not be familiar with it or how to apply it in their practice. So there's a real need to educate healthcare providers about the importance of mechanical power, how to use this new equation, and how to interpret the results to make informed decisions. Exactly. This knowledge could be incorporated into medical school and nursing programs, continuing education courses, and training programs for respiratory therapists. It's about making sure that everyone involved in the care of patients on ventilators is up to date on the latest knowledge and best practices. And it's not just about individual learning, it's about fostering a culture of collaboration and communication within healthcare teams. Managing patients on ventilators involves doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, and pharmacists all working together. So making sure everyone understands mechanical power and how to use this new equation could really improve communication and coordination within the healthcare team. Exactly. It's about everyone being on the same page and working together to provide the best possible care. Now, research like this always opens up new avenues for exploration. What are some of the directions that future research might take building on this foundation? Well, for starters, there's still a lot to learn about the specific relationships between mechanical power and the different types of lung injury. Researchers could investigate things like volutrauma, barotrauma, and electrauma in more detail. Absolutely. And we need to see how mechanical power monitoring works in different patient populations. People with ARDS, COPD, and obesity might have unique responses to ventilation, and understanding those differences could lead to more personalized care. And imagine the possibilities for developing new technologies and therapies that specifically target mechanical power as a way to prevent or even reverse lung injury. Oh, the possibilities are really endless. This research has opened the door to a whole new era of research in mechanical ventilation. It's an incredibly exciting time to be working in this field, and I can't wait to see what new discoveries and innovations emerge in the years to come. Now, beyond the specific focus on mechanical ventilation, this research also speaks to a broader shift in how we think about healthcare. In what way? It's about moving from a reactive approach waiting for problems to arise and then treating them to a more proactive approach, we're starting to use technology and data to predict and prevent problems before they even happen. It's like switching from putting out fires to preventing them in the first place. Exactly. It's about being proactive and using all the tools at our disposal to keep people healthy. And it's about recognizing that every patient is an individual with unique needs and tailoring treatment plans accordingly. Personalization is key. It's about moving away from one-size-fits-all medicine and embracing the complexities of individual health. This research really showcases the incredible power of human ingenuity and the dedication of those working in healthcare to make a difference in people's lives. Absolutely. And as we develop increasingly sophisticated technology to monitor and manage mechanical ventilation, it raises some important ethical and societal questions. Like what? Well, for one, who will have access to these new technologies? Will they be available to everyone, regardless of their income or where they live? That's a critical question. Healthcare disparities are a real problem, and we need to make sure that new technologies don't exacerbate those inequalities. Exactly. And we need to think carefully about how these technologies are used and make sure they are applied responsibly and ethically. It's a conversation we need to be having as a society. Technology has the potential to do so much good, but we need to make sure it's used for the benefit of all. Absolutely. This research reminds us that science isn't just about facts and figures. It's about values and choices. And it's about using our knowledge and ingenuity to create a better, healthier, and more equitable future for everyone. Now, before we move on, I think it's important to acknowledge the human element in all of this. You're absolutely right. While we've been discussing the science and technology of mechanical ventilation, it's easy to forget that behind every ventilator, there's a person. A person with hopes, dreams, and loved ones who are deeply worried about them. Exactly. This research is ultimately about improving the lives of those individuals. It's about easing their suffering and giving them the best possible chance to recover and live full and meaningful lives. It's a beautiful reminder that healthcare is about much more than machines and algorithms. It's about compassion, empathy, and the human connection between those who care and those who need care. It's about using our knowledge and skills to make a positive difference in the world. 
one breath at a time. Speaking of innovation, this research has also sparked a lot of interest in closed loop ventilation systems. Those are the ones that can not only monitor mechanical power, but also automatically adjust the ventilator settings in real time. Right. Exactly. It's like having a self-driving car for ventilation. The system would constantly adapt to the patient's changing needs, keeping mechanical power within a safe and personalized range. That sounds incredibly futuristic, like something out of a science fiction movie. It does, doesn't it? And while it's still early days, research in this area is progressing rapidly. Closed-loop systems have the potential to revolutionize ventilator management, reducing the workload on healthcare providers, and potentially improving patient safety. Of course, developing such sophisticated systems would require incredibly advanced algorithms, super sensitive sensors, and rigorous testing to ensure they are safe and reliable. You're absolutely right. And we'd need to carefully consider the ethical implications, such as the potential for over-reliance on technology and the importance of maintaining human oversight. But the potential benefits are so compelling that it's hard not to be excited about the possibilities. I agree. It's a fascinating example of how engineering, computer science, and medicine are coming together to create truly groundbreaking solutions. And speaking of monitoring, this research really emphasizes the importance of continuous monitoring for patients on ventilators. Traditionally, ventilator settings have been adjusted based on like intermittent blood gas measurements and how the patient looks clinically. But with mechanical power monitoring, we can now continuously track a key variable that's directly linked to lung injury. Exactly. Continuous monitoring allows for more timely and precise adjustments, helping to prevent problems before they escalate. It's like having a constant stream of data that informs our decisions and guides our actions. And it has the potential to significantly enhance patient safety. How so? By alerting clinicians to even small changes in mechanical power, we might be able to detect early signs of lung injury and intervene before it becomes severe. It's about being proactive rather than reactive, using technology to enhance our vigilance and protect our patients. Precisely. Now, as this technology becomes more widely used, it will be crucial to develop clear guidelines and protocols for mechanical power monitoring and management. That makes sense. We need consistency in how this technology is used to ensure quality care for all patients. Exactly. These protocols should address things like how to calculate mechanical power, what thresholds should trigger alerts and interventions, and how to best integrate this type of monitoring into existing clinical workflows. It's about creating a shared understanding among healthcare professionals and making sure everyone is working from the same playbook. Absolutely. And as this new knowledge about mechanical power becomes more widespread, there's a growing need for educational resources for clinicians. Right. Professional societies, medical schools, and hospitals need to develop courses, workshops, and online modules to teach clinicians about this new way of thinking about ventilation. I completely agree. It's about empowering clinicians with the knowledge and skills they need to effectively use this new technology and make the best decisions for their patients. It's incredible to see how research like this can stimulate innovation across the medical device industry. It is. Companies are already developing new ventilators with built-in mechanical power monitoring. They're also creating separate devices that can be attached to existing ventilators to add this capability. And there are even new software applications that can analyze mechanical power data and provide doctors with valuable insights. It's a really dynamic field, and it's all driven by the desire to improve care for patients and reduce the burden of Billy. At the end of the day, it's all about improving the lives of patients. That's what it all comes down to. While this study focused on developing and validating a new way to measure mechanical power, the ultimate goal is to use this tool to improve outcomes for patients on ventilators. If we can prevent lung injury, reduce the amount of time people need to be on ventilators, and improve survival rates, that would be a huge win for patients and for healthcare. It would. And while we need more research to definitively show the impact of mechanical power monitoring on those big outcomes, the potential benefits are enormous. It's really exciting to see how scientific discoveries are making their way into clinical practice and have the potential to make such a tangible difference in people's lives. This research really showcases how different areas of medicine are interconnected. In what way? Well, while this particular study focused on mechanical ventilation, the concepts and principles they explored have relevance to other areas of critical care and respiratory medicine as well. For example, using a readily available measurement like mean airway pressure to estimate a more complex variable like mechanical power 
could be applied to other physiological parameters. Exactly. And what we learned about mechanical power in the lungs could potentially help us understand other organ systems as well. It's a reminder that the human body is an incredibly complex and interconnected system. And discoveries in one area can often have implications for other areas. Absolutely. This research also reinforces the importance of collaboration between different medical specialties. Treating patients on ventilators often requires a team of specialists working together, pulmonologists, intensivists, anesthesiologists, surgeons. This research highlights the need for all these specialists to be on the same page and work together to develop and implement the best strategies for ventilation. Exactly. It's about breaking down silos and creating a culture of shared knowledge and collaboration across different disciplines. And this knowledge also needs to be passed on to future generations of healthcare providers. I couldn't agree more. As mechanical power monitoring becomes more widely adopted, it will be crucial to include it in medical school curricula, residency training programs, and continuing education courses. Future doctors and nurses need to be equipped with this knowledge and be ready to use these new tools effectively to make informed decisions about ventilator management. Absolutely. We need to equip the next generation of healthcare providers with the skills and knowledge they need to embrace innovation and continue pushing the boundaries of patient care. This research also highlights the importance of remembering the patient as an individual. I couldn't agree more. While technology can play a vital role in improving healthcare, we must never forget that the patient is at the heart of everything we do. Mechanical power monitoring isn't just about numbers and algorithms. It's about using these tools to provide the best possible care for each individual patient. It's about listening to our patients, understanding their needs, and working with them to create treatment plans that align with their values and preferences. It's about shifting from a more traditional model of care, where the doctor dictates everything, to a more collaborative model where patients and clinicians work together as partners. Exactly, and that's a beautiful reminder that technology should be a tool that empowers us to deliver more compassionate and patient-centered care. Now it's important to acknowledge that this research, while groundbreaking, is just one step in a much longer journey. It's a reminder that science is always a work in progress. We're constantly learning and refining our understanding. Right. This study focused on a specific group of patients, those receiving ventilation in a simulated environment. Future studies need to confirm these findings in real-world settings with a wider variety of patients, including those with different health conditions and those on different types of ventilators. Absolutely. And we need to conduct longer-term studies to understand how mechanical power monitoring impacts patients in the long run, their survival, their overall health, and their quality of life. We also need to assess the cost effectiveness of mechanical power monitoring to see how feasible it is to implement broadly. So there's still much more to learn, but this research is a fantastic starting point. It's opened a new chapter in our understanding of mechanical ventilation and paved the way for future research and innovation. It's a very exciting time to be working in this field. Absolutely. I'm eager to see what new discoveries and breakthroughs emerge as we continue to explore how to best care for patients who need ventilation. And on a personal note, I have to say there's something really elegant about the MMM equation itself. I agree. It's such a simple yet powerful formula. It captures the essence of mechanical power and uses readily available measurements to estimate a complex variable. It's a testament to the ingenuity and creativity of the researchers who developed it. And a reminder that sometimes the most straightforward solutions are the most effective. This equation is truly a gift to the medical community, a tool that has the potential to change the way we approach ventilator management. And it's a gift that will keep on giving as it inspires further research and innovation. This study also highlights the importance of scientific rigor and transparency. The researchers went to great lengths to ensure their findings were accurate and reliable. They designed their study carefully, collected robust data, used appropriate statistical methods, and were very open about their methods and limitations. That transparency allows others to scrutinize their work and build upon their findings, which is essential for scientific progress. It's a great example of how science is a collaborative endeavor and how trust and integrity are the foundation for moving forward. And it shows the importance of mentorship in science. The lead author of the study was a medical student working closely with experienced mentors. That's fantastic. Mentorship is so crucial for nurturing the next generation of scientists and ensuring that passion for discovery continues. It's a reminder that science isn't just about individual brilliance. It's about teamwork, collaboration, and passing on knowledge and experience to those coming up behind us.
The reaction to this study from the clinical community has been really positive. It has. The simplicity and practicality of the Meliem equation have made it an instant hit with doctors and nurses who are caring for patients on ventilators. They're eager to learn more about mechanical power and how to use this new knowledge to provide better care. It's so inspiring to see how research like this can translate into real-world benefits for patients, and it's not just clinicians who are taking notice. You're right. Policymakers and healthcare leaders are also paying attention to the potential of mechanical power monitoring to improve outcomes and reduce costs. Policymakers are looking at ways to promote the use of this technology and incorporate it into clinical guidelines, and healthcare leaders are investing in education and training to ensure that clinicians have the knowledge and skills they need to use it effectively. It's amazing to see how scientific breakthroughs can have such a wide-reaching impact, influencing policy, practice, and the future of healthcare. And the impact extends beyond the world of medicine. This research could also spark innovation in the medical device industry. In what way? The MM equation has created a demand for new devices and software applications that can automatically calculate and display mechanical power. So, companies are stepping up to create tools that will make this knowledge even more accessible and easier to use. Exactly. It's a vibrant field with lots of innovation driven by the urgent need to improve care and reduce the burden of the lie. Now, while the ultimate goal is to improve patient outcomes, we need to be realistic about the limitations of this research and recognize that more studies are needed. We've already touched on the need for larger and longer term studies, but what else do we need to investigate? One area that needs further exploration is the question of optimal targets for mechanical power. While the study showed that the MM equation can accurately measure it, it didn't provide specific guidance on what levels of mechanical power are safe or harmful for different patients. So it's not as simple as saying, keep it below this number and everything will be fine. Unfortunately not. It's more nuanced than that. We need more research to determine what. The ideal mechanical power targets are for different patients, taking into account, you know, their age, their underlying lung condition, how sick they are, and how well they're responding to treatment. So it's really about personalizing those ventilator settings, finding that right balance of support and protection for each individual. Exactly. And that's where the art of medicine meets the science of mechanical ventilation. We need doctors to use their clinical judgment, their experience, and their knowledge of the individual patient to interpret the data and make the best possible decisions. It's about combining the power of technology with the wisdom of human experience. Precisely. And speaking of technology, this research also creates new opportunities for collaboration between clinicians and engineers. You're right. Developing new technologies to monitor and manage mechanical power is going to require expertise from both sides. Clinicians can bring their understanding of the challenges that are faced at the bedside and what's needed, you know, in a busy hospital environment, while engineers can apply their skills to create innovative solutions. It's a perfect example of how teamwork and interdisciplinary collaboration can really drive progress in healthcare. Now, I was really struck by the fact that this study used a simulator to test their new equation. Yes, that's a great example of how simulation is becoming increasingly important in medical education and training. Simulators provide a safe space for doctors and nurses to practice procedures, experiment with new technologies, and really hone their skills without any risk to real patients. Exactly. And as technology advances, we can expect even more sophisticated simulators that can mimic complex clinical scenarios and provide really realistic feedback to learners. It's a really exciting time to be involved in medical education. We're seeing a real shift towards embracing new technologies and innovative approaches to teaching. It's all about preparing the next generation of healthcare providers to be as skilled and knowledgeable as possible. And at the end of the day, all of this comes back to the patient. This research emphasizes the importance of patient engagement in their own health care. I agree. Patients are not just passive recipients of care. They are active participants who should be involved in making decisions about their health. Absolutely. As we develop new technologies and treatments, it's essential to involve patients in the process. We need to educate them about the risks and benefits of different options, empower them to make informed choices, and respect their values and preferences. It's about moving away from a model where the doctor tells the patient what to do and toward a more collaborative approach where patients and clinicians work together as partners. Exactly. This research is a powerful reminder that science is not just about facts and figures. It's about people. It's about using our knowledge and creativity to improve the lives of others, reduce suffering, and help people live healthier and more fulfilling lives. So as we wrap up our deep dive into the world of mechanical power and ventilation, what are some key takeaways for our listeners? 
Well, first and foremost, this research has given us an amazing new tool, the Mellet Equation. It's a simple and practical way to estimate mechanical power, and it has the potential to revolutionize how we manage ventilators, allowing for more personalized and proactive care. Absolutely. And it's important to remember that while mechanical power isn't the only thing that can cause lung injury, it's a critical factor that we need to be aware of and manage carefully. This research also highlights the importance of ongoing innovation and collaboration. We need to keep developing new technologies and treatments to help prevent and treat villi. And we need clinicians, researchers, and engineers to work together to drive progress. I couldn't agree more. And finally, I think this research reminds us that science is a continuous journey of discovery and refinement. Our understanding of mechanical ventilation is always evolving. And we need to stay open to new ideas, question our assumptions, and use our knowledge to provide the best possible care for our patients. It's an exciting time to be in the field of respiratory care, and I'm confident that the future holds even more incredible breakthroughs and innovations. To our listeners, we hope this deep dive has given you a glimpse into this fascinating world. Keep asking questions and stay curious. Remember, knowledge is power. The more we understand about the complexities of the human body and the technology we use to treat it, the better equipped we are to provide compassionate and effective care. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep breathing easy.